Hello, this is Dean McDonald from TechSkills. In part two of our two-part series, I will be reinstalling a pin grid array or PGA processor into a zero insertion force or ZIF processor socket. Let's pick up where we left off. To replace this processor back into the socket, make sure that the lever is in the up position. Then I need to orient the processor. Processors will generally have a dot or a notch, or in this case a gold triangle to indicate the orientation. On the socket there's also a notched where there's a pin missing in the corner. To put the PGA processor into a ZIF socket, ZIF means zero insertion force so I, all I have to do is line it up and it should just drop into place. I shouldn't have to force it. Once it's in place, put the lever down, make sure that the lever locks into place. Now when I replace my heat sink, there's a little raised notch. That's going to fit right between the processor and the socket. So I line that up. And I hold it in place while I place the first locking clip. And the second one I should be able to hold it in place, push it down, and it should snap into place. I want to make sure that that's secure. Then I can replace my processor fan. The fan cable has three holes which fit into the three pins on the motherboard connector. There's a little notch right here also, so this can only go in one direction. Now I can replace the RAM chips. These RAM chips happen to have two notches. They correspond to the two notches that are on the sockets. I just line those up, line the RAM into the slot, and then as I push it down with my thumbs, those plastic locking clips should lock into place. Now I can replace the second one following that same procedure. Now I can replace the IDE controller cables. And I can connect those to the devices. Then I can connect my hard drive IDE controller cable. Now I can replace the floppy drive ribbon cable. and then each of the power supply connectors. Start with the Molex connectors up on my optical drives. Then the Molex connector on the hard drive. bird connector on the floppy drive and then the ATX power supply connector and that should snap into place once I've replaced all the components and made all the connections I can plug in my keyboard mouse and monitor plug in the power cord and turn on the computer and verify that the computer boots as the computer boots, I can watch the BIOS screen for any indications that it found the processor. In this case, it's showing some video, so I know the processor is at least installed. It did indicate that it found an Intel Celeron 700 processor. 
Press Control Alt Delete to restart the computer. This time, instead of booting to the BIOS flash screen, I want to press the delete key repeatedly to get into our BIOS setup screen. From the CMOS setup screen, I can use the keyboard to move around. To find information on the CPU, I will go to the advanced CMOS setup. Press the enter key. On the advanced CMOS setup screen, there are two pieces of information regarding the CPU. The first is the CPU speed. In this case, it's indicated as 700 megahertz. Second piece of information is the CPU ratio selection. In this case, we have a locked ratio. This means that we can't change the CPU multiplier of our front side bus. It'll be locked in at whatever the front side bus speed of our processor is. This CMOS and this BIOS do not allow us to change the clock speed, so we can't underclock and or overclock this processor. In the next section, I'll boot up another computer that will allow us to change some of those multipliers, maybe the voltage setting, so you can see what that looks like also. I'm booting a second computer that allows a little bit more advanced BIOS boot settings. As the power on self-test completes and the BIOS boots, I press the pause break key to allow us to look at the BIOS screen. In this case, we have an AMD Athlon 900. It's running at 100 megahertz front side bus and it has a 9 times or 9x multiplier. I'll press the delete key to enter the CMOS setup screen. From the CMOS setup utility I can use the keyboard to move over to the frequency and voltage control and then I press enter. From this screen I can see that the current CPU frequency is 900 megahertz. My CPU vCore adjustment which is the voltage is set at the default. If I select that option and press enter that allows me to change or select a different voltage so I can up the voltage to run it a little bit hotter or I can lower the voltage to give me a little bit longer lifespan. Press escape to abort that screen. I can also change the CPU host and the PCI clock. Right now it's set at the default settings of 100 megahertz for the CPU host clock and the PCI clock is set at 33. If I press enter I can see that screen. If I want to underclock this processor, I could set the CPU host clock at 90 and the PCI bus at 30 megahertz. Or if I wanted to overclock it, this one allows me to go up to 130 front side bus and 32 megahertz for the PCI bus. As you overclock, you want to make sure that your CPU has ample cooling. This may void your warranty and it may reduce the life of your CPU. So make sure you only overclock your processor if you know what you're doing. I press the escape key to exit this screen. I press the escape key again to go back to the main screen. A few other CPU settings I can change are under the advanced BIOS features for this particular BIOS. I select that option and press enter. On this option screen I can enable and enable the L1 and L2 cache. I can also enable or disable ECC or error checking on the L2 cache. Press the escape key to exit this menu. One final option that this BIOS does support is under the PC health status. I select that option and press enter. This BIOS and motherboard have various temperature sensors and they also have a CPU fan speed sensor. So I can see the current CPU temperature inside the case. I can see the CPU fan speed. I can see the current chassis fan speed. If I had one attached it would show me that. Then I have the voltage cores and what each voltage is set to. Then I have a CPU fan protection option. This option will beep or it might turn the machine off if the CPU fan quits functioning. It also has an alarm and a turn off function so if the machine gets up over above 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit it will automatically shut down the machine. This is a fail safe that can protect your machine in case the CPU fan fails or the temperature inside the case becomes too hot. The machine will automatically shut down and hopefully save the processor. Those were some of the main CPU functions that you might find in a BIOS. Not all BIOS allow you to overclock or underclock the CPU, so your BIOS may be slightly different. In this video, I described the basic process for removing and installing a PGA processor into a ZIF socket. Good luck and thanks for watching.